Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am doing a get ready with me using some new luxury beauty products that I'm very excited about. So, Clay de Peau released some new eyeshadow quads. They've actually been released in the United States for quite a while, but they weren't released in Canada. They finally got released to us, so I knew that I had to pick at least one up. And, spoiler alert, I will probably be picking up more because this formula is very, very beautiful. Even though the price tag on this is quite high, the formula is honestly exceptional. So I'm going to show you a look using this shade, which is Beach Pebbles, probably the most neutral palette that they came out with. I also have some other goodies from Givenchy. I picked up one of the new Prism Libre blushes. I have a new lipstick. I picked up one of these. I think this is like viral now, the YSL. This is the Rouge Full Update Candy Glaze. And I also picked up the Prada Foundation. So I wanted to kind of showcase all my thoughts on this new luxury makeup and do a get ready with me. So if you want to see my thoughts on all this new makeup, just keep watching. I feel like it's been a while since I've done a trying new makeup video and I'm so excited because I have so many new goodies. I'm specifically very excited about this Clay de Peau. This is the Ombre Color Eye Color Quad. I got the shade 2 Beach Pebbles. This just seemed the most neutral and basic and if you haven't been to my channel before, I like really neutral and basic eye looks. I kind of like I just like natural makeup. That's just my go-to. That's my thing. So this is what the quad looks like. I actually haven't even tried this out at all. So it comes in this refillable packaging, which I like about Clay de Peau because then you don't need to buy a bunch of different palettes. You can just buy these refills and place them in the palette yourself. So I also picked up a palette and it just, it comes separately. Yes, these are very expensive. Um, they're like the price of a Tom Ford quad basically just this is so it was expensive to buy both of these but i don't know clay de po they just do really really great products so i don't mind that so i'm guessing you just snap this in here yep and it comes with a little mirror so it is really nice packaging and i'm sure i hate these little things that they stick in here they always fall out but i'm sure you guys have seen tons of reviews on this product so apparently this shade right here is a primer it does feel quite creamy. There's a creamy quality to it. It almost feels stiff. It's very interesting. It doesn't feel like a typical powder eyeshadow. And the rest of the eyeshadows, they do feel very soft. They feel like a powder eyeshadow. Honestly, this color story is so soft. I don't even know if you'll be able to see swatches of this, but here is the lightest shade. It honestly is like a golden beige with a bit of a sheen. So it blends in with my skin tone like perfectly. It's just a bit more golden. And has a bit more shimmer but it's very very subtle and then here is like a matte brown it's a very beautiful neutral leaning warm brown i would say it is matte beautiful color this primer shade that i showed you you literally can't detect it on my skin it looks like my skin except that maybe there's like a bit of a sheen to it it's you literally can't even detect it on my hand and then here is another this has a sheen as well has probably the most shimmer out of all the shades, but it's not glittery by any means. And it's definitely the deepest shade. This matte shade right here. And I'm going to use this as a transition shade in my crease. Actually, no, I've heard people say you should apply the primer first. So I'm going to go in with a Wayne Goss 18 brush and I'm going to lay down this primer shade first. And I'm just going to apply it all over the lid. Honestly, you can barely see this color. On my skin it blends right in so I'm assuming this will just act as a primer and then I'm going back in with this color I've already deposited color onto this brush so I'm gonna tap off that excess get that excess product off on the back of my hand I feel like I probably don't need to because clay de po shadows just usually blend themselves like I really liked the last formula however I will say that the last formula did have a little more shimmer than what I usually use and I didn't, I wasn't like obsessed with the color story. There was only one quad that I really felt like I wanted to pick up because it was quite neutral. But the other shades I was like, eh, they're not really my thing. They have a little bit too much color to them or they're just kind of odd choices. So I'm really excited that they reformulated. And Clay de Peau, they're, they're a brand that when they reformulate products, they're usually very, very good. Um, a lot of other companies I don't love when they reformulate stuff and I get a little nervous. I don't know if that's the right word. But with Clay de Peau, I am pretty much guaranteed that they're going to create an even better formula. And this honestly, so far, it's very, very soft. It, it does show up on me, but it's very, very subtle. But I really like that type of makeup. 
because I just like subtle makeup. I like barely their makeup, so this is perfect for me. Um, I really, really like this formula so far. If I could make any comparison, I would say that these are most similar to like Chanel quads with how soft and subtle they are. So they're basically makeup that just enhances your natural beauty versus it being very detectable makeup, which is my personal preference. So it's not gonna be comparable to something like Pat McGrath makeup, which is so pigmented, a little bit more glittery and intense. It's very, what I wanna say, dramatic and noticeable makeup, where this is very subtle, barely there makeup. It just enhances your natural beauty. I'm gonna go in with this deepest shade here onto that same brush, because I honestly don't even feel like I need to use different brushes. That's how blendable these are, and that's how soft they are as well. So I'm just gonna place this on the very outside corner, maybe blend it through the crease ever so slightly, just the outer crease though. And then for the lid, I'm going to take this first shade in the palette using a Sonia G, this is a builder too. And I'm just going to press this all over the eyelid. Okay, that has more pigment, not like a ton of pigment. Again, it's very soft, but it has more pigment than like the matte shades did or that transition shade. And then I'm just going to, because I've laid down a little bit more color, I'm going to just take that transition shade again, and I'm just going to go over that edge just to make sure everything is really softly blended into one another. And then for the final touch on the lash line, I'm gonna take this deepest shade again, and I'm going to run that on my, tap, on my top lash line, almost as an eyeliner, and I'm gonna use a BK Beauty 204 brush. I'm just going to press this in to the top lash line. Because this isn't too deep and it is soft, I'm using, this brush is really dense. It's smaller, but it is dense and kind of thick. It's not as precise as like a flat definer brush like this, but because it's a lighter shade, I don't feel like I need to be as precise and use a smaller brush. So I'm just running that on the top lash line from inner corner to outer corner. I'm just gonna run a little bit of color along the lower lash line. I'm going to take I'm gonna take this middle shade and I'm going to run it, actually no, I'm gonna start off with the deepest shade and I'm going to run that a little bit outside the lower lash line. So just keeping it towards that very outer corner, bringing it about halfway on my lower lash line and then that's it. And then I'm gonna take that transition shade, that medium matte brown, and I'm gonna run that along the lower lash line. I'm gonna bring it all the way across. And I might need to touch up this lower lash line when I go in with my concealer and foundation, but I don't mind doing that after. I just kind of want to kind of complete the look before I go in with base product. So I just went in with mascara. I went in with the Dior Lash Primer and the YSL Lash Clash Mascara in the shade Brown. And I really love this eyeshadow palette. It is very sophisticated and refined and really beautiful if you're someone that likes subtle makeup. If you have a deeper skin tone than me, if you're medium tan to dark, I feel like this palette might be a little too light for you, but if you are um, a little bit deeper than me, like an NC35, NC40, I think you could work with this. So that would be like a Chanel BD51 or B50. I think you could still make this work. Um, but again, it's just very light and natural makeup. I am, again, and I have some other eyeshadows. I also picked up the Merit. These are the Solo Shadows. I really like these. I really like the colors, but I feel like these are MAC Paint Pots. They are literally the same formula as the MAC Paint Pot. So I don't feel like they're innovative and really new. I just feel like they're literally MAC Paint Pots, but they release better colors. The formula is very, very similar. It's that very dry formula. So if you're someone with really dry eyes, I don't really think you'll like this because it, it does look drying on the eyes if you have dry eyes. It's, it is just a very dry formula, but because it's a very dry formula, it does last all day long on me specifically. And I really do enjoy this color. This is the shade Machetta, Machetta, I think. And um, I really like it because it's a beautiful neutral brown, but I didn't want to play with it today because I was showing or showcasing the Clay Depot eyeshadows more. Um, but I just wanted to mention that. And let's move on to the face. I do have a new foundation. I actually have a new primer as well. And this is the Surratt Perfectionist Primer. And I was actually sent this from Surratt. I just haven't even tried it yet. So thank you Surratt for sending this to me. And I will obviously give my honest thoughts on this. So it comes in this little squeezy packaging. 
Oh, it's very liquidy. It's just a white kind of cast. It doesn't really have a fragrance to it, but I'm just going to apply it all over the skin. It does feel nice and hydrating. So I kind of just like to, I have sunscreen on it underneath, so I'm kind of just patting this on. It, does, it feels a little bit hydrating, but not super hydrating, like nothing. I'm trying to compare it to something not as hydrating, something like the Victoria Beckham primer that is much more glowy and hydrated. There's no information about this primer on the box, and because I didn't purchase this myself, I didn't obviously research it because I was sent it. Um, so this is a blend of oil absorbing powders. It's a primer that eliminates shine and dullness and creates a pore blurring skin softening effect. That is my thing. If you don't know anything about my channel, I love pore blurring, soft focus, filtered type of products. And I would say, I mean, it doesn't look, I don't know, it's really hard to tell when you have no makeup on. I feel like I'll be able to tell more with, with product over top of my face. But it does dry down. Like, I thought it felt hydrating, but now that it's dried down on my skin, it does feel more mattifying. Um, it says that it's lightweight, silky finish, no pilling or no creasing. And I will say because of how mattifying it feels that I think it will probably have that silky finish. But if you have really dry skin, this might not work for you because it does feel like it definitely dries down onto the skin. Anyways, enough about that primer. I also picked up this new Prada foundation. This is the Prada Reveal Skin Optimizing Foundation. I chose the shade MN40, and unfortunately this shade sold out in the actual foundation. So I just picked up the refill. I was really unsure about the shade. So this is actually unavailable in Canada. I think you can buy it in the US now, but this is only available at Selfridges if you are in Canada. So I picked it up at Selfridges, and because I was unsure of the shade, I was like, you know what, I'll just get the refill anyways, and we'll see. I have no idea if this will work because I haven't tried it out yet. So I'll just test this out and see. But I was really curious about this foundation, one, because it has a little bit more coverage, which I've been, I really like lightweight natural foundations that look really natural on the skin. So those more light coverage foundations, but I am looking for something to add into my collection that's more medium coverage because I just find medium coverage foundations, they're more manipulative. Like you can wear them, you can mix them in with a moisturizer or you can use just a very, very light amount of that product and make it look like a light coverage foundation. So I like to have that in my repertoire just because I feel like they're more usable foundations and you can get a variety of different looks out of a medium coverage foundation than you can with just something really lightweight. And I also really wanted to pick this up because I looked at the ingredients and they are safe for sensitive skin. They are safe for acne prone skin. If you don't know, I have very, very sensitive skin. If something's going to break me out, it's gonna happen to me because that just happened so I did look it up I have this ingredient checker and I will list it down below because a few of you requested that last time then I look up all my uh, foundations or skincare products that I'm going to purchase I look it up on that skincare checker just to see if there's any irritating products so that I know that if I am breaking out because of a foundation it's probably because of that certain ingredient but anyways I'm just gonna get started with this so I'm gonna give this a good shake and I am going to I'll just start with one pump and I feel like that shade will work it has a very nice consistency to it like it's very fluid there is a, there is a fragrance to it that I guess is the one downfall so if you're sensitive to fragrance this might not be the foundation for you and I'm taking this Shiseido Kabuki brush and I'm just going to start applying it all over the skin so I like to kind of just start on the outskirts of my skin and then work inwards and I apply foundation on my nose lastly because I feel like when you apply foundation to your nose it's the most noticeable so I like to go in with the least amount of product there so with that excess product I'll run over the edges okay this looks really pretty I'm interested to see how this foundation works without this Surat primer because I feel like this Surat primer is making this foundation look more mattifying than it probably is without this primer um but it is really nice on my skin so far i'm going to take another pump just because i want to see how buildable this is it's giving good coverage but i wouldn't say it's not full by any means like i can still see freckles peeking through my skin and i feel like this color is decent it's probably just slightly too cool tone for me and i'm just going to go in with a sponge because i like to run over everything 
So I definitely don't love the fragrance of this foundation, but I really like everything else about this foundation. And I think I'll, I will actually like it more without this Syrup uh, Primer underneath. I think this Syrup Primer will, will work really well with products like, say, the Chanel CC Cream, which is quite dewy, or my Chanel Sublimage La Sance de Tente, um, that is quite a glowy foundation. I think that this primer will be excellent, but I wouldn't use it under a foundation like this where I want it to be like slightly glowier. But the coverage is really beautiful. It doesn't look makeup y at all on the skin. It maybe looks like the tiniest bit dry around my nose, but again, I think that could be prevented by not using that primer underneath. Now, I'm not sure if it's the foundation or the primer that's doing this, but my pores look very, very, very smooth and very blurred. So that is very exciting to me. So I'm going to have to try this foundation again on its own to see if it actually is the foundation or if it's the primer that's giving me that really smoothing effect. So this unifies skin with an all day soft matte. So it is a soft matte finish. So I probably shouldn't have used this Syrup Primer underneath. And it is seamless and flexible coverage, optimizes light diffusion in real life and on screen with the in real life micro filter technology. It blurs the look of pores and fine lines. I agree, it definitely is blurring my pores. I don't really have any fine lines yet, but definitely the pores, like my skin looks ultra, ultra smooth. Doesn't look makeup at all. I feel like though, because this is a medium coverage foundation, or maybe like a high medium, it has the potential to obviously look heavy if you go in with too much coverage in certain areas of your skin. That just happens when you're using a foundation with more coverage. But this looks absolutely beautiful on the skin with just a very thin layer all over the skin. And I can still see like freckles shining through. So it's not full coverage by any means. I'm really, really enjoying this so far. But it is throwing me off because I usually go in with concealer before foundation, so I feel like I look a little bit odd. I do like that this is refillable packaging. I think that's really cool as well, that you can actually buy the refills. Usually companies take like forever to bring out their refills. Like I think the Chantecaque Cushion Foundation is technically supposed to be refillable, and it was released in 2020 or 2021, and they still haven't released those refillable cushions. Um, but this actually came out at the same time, which I really enjoy. And I am going to use the concealer today from Syrup Beauty as well in the shade 4. This is just my holy grail concealer. It is so, so good. So I'm going to use some under my eyes. The one thing I don't love is that sponge tip, but this concealer is so good, I don't care. It's, it's just amazing. It has really nice coverage. Not too much, not too little. The perfect amount. I don't need a corrector underneath because I'm someone with kind of darker... Uh, my dry circles and it just wears all day long I don't need to set it down with powder it doesn't crease it doesn't settle into fine lines you guys were wondering my mom's thoughts on this concealer and she also loves this concealer as well it is her favorite when we were in Hawaii this is the concealer I brought and this is the concealer she brought as well so it's just it's so so good I definitely feel like I need a little bit of glow to my skin because I am quite mattified now that this has dried down on my skin, it's definitely more matte. But again, I really feel like this Syrup Primer has a lot to play into that. So I'm gonna go in with my Gucci. These are the multi-use drops. They're the Illuminator Dute. So I just like to apply a little bit to the palm of my hand. And then I go in with this BK Beauty 203 brush. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that product. I'm going to apply it to the tops of my cheekbones. I really like this product because it has a dry down to it. So it's a type of liquid illuminator that actually dries down on the skin. I'm just taking a little bit above my brow as well and the excess down the bridge of my nose. So I really like this because it does dry down onto the skin versus a lot of liquid or cream illuminators. They stay very dewy on the skin and then you sometimes like your hair gets stuck in it and all that jazz and I really dislike that. So this is really good because it sets down. I will say though that it is not ultra long wearing, like it does fade, it doesn't last all day long, but it just gives the most beautiful glow. There are no shimmer flecks. It's just such a natural, glow on the skin. So I absolutely love, love, love this. 
And I think for bronzer today, because I know this is still available in the US, I don't think this is available in Canada anymore. So if you are in the US, please, please get your hands on this. This is so good. This is the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream in the shade 390, 390 Soleil Tan Bronze. So this is the original shade, but they reformulated this bronzer in the summer to come out with the summer collection and they reformulated it without coconut oil. So I find that this is a longer lasting bronzer. It's not as creamy or dewy looking or sheer as the previous bronzer. Very similar though. Um, it's just, it's not like a really, really noticeable difference, but I just find that this bronzer is even more long lasting and it has a, a better pore blurring and filtered effect. And I wonder if it's because the coconut oil is removed or maybe they added some more pore blurring ingredients, but I do find that it glides across the skin beautifully and it does add that really beautiful filtered effect to the complexion. So I really like using this type of product underneath makeup as well. Like if I don't even want to apply foundation, it's so good for that use as well. So I did pick up a new cream blush, but I'm not gonna use it because I don't love it, but I just kind of want to explain my thoughts. Um, this is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Cream Blush in the shade Rose and Brunch. Now, it does have really nice pigmentation. If you're someone that really likes pigmented blushes, it is very, very intense. So if you have a deeper skin tone, you might love this. And I don't think this works for me because I have really dry skin. And this is a very, very, very dry cream blush. So it dries down onto the skin. And because of that, you don't have a lot of time to work with it because it will dry down. And it dries down very mattifying. Um, so this would be great if you're looking for something like very, very long lasting because it does last a very long time. I just find that it makes my dry skin look worse. And I don't love that I don't have that much time to blend it out onto my skin. I just feel like it dries down really quickly. And because of that, it can be a little patchy and it can remove product. Like if you apply foundation, obviously you've applied foundation underneath your cream blush, it can remove that product underneath. That also might be because of my skin type, because I'm very dry, it might just pick up product easier, but unfortunately I don't love this product. Um, that's kind of a miss for me. But I did pick up this Givenchy Prism Libre Blush. So this is the four color loose powder blush in the shade number three, Wall Coral. Coral. Um, I haven't even tried this yet, so this will be kind of a little first impression. So it does come with this little puff. I'm not gonna apply my blush with a puff. That just feels like a disaster to me. So it comes with these four different powders. I'm sure you guys have seen this. This isn't exactly new. So you kind of just pour out a bit of this blush into the cap. I mean, that's what I'm gonna do. There might be another way to apply this. I'm a little nervous about this because of the four colors. I'm, I'm worried that it will look different on each cheek. So I'm just going to apply back and forth on the cheeks, I think is my plan. So getting a little bit of product. I'm also worried that this is gonna to be too pigmented, but we will see. And I'm just kind of breaking up that powder in the top of the cap. I feel like, again, this will be the best way. And just making sure it's really distributed evenly onto my brush. And then I'm gonna tap off any excess onto the palm of my hand, just in case this is really pigmented. And then I'll apply it to the skin. And then again, I don't, I don't wanna apply like one cheek at a time because then I'm worried that the colors will be different because that there's four different colors. I feel like you might get a different color every time you apply this cheek product on your face, if that makes sense. This is really nice. It's actually going on more sheer than I thought it would. Like it's not as pigmented. So I feel like I could even go in with a little bit more color. Ooh, this is beautiful. It's a very, very, again, natural looking blush. It's kind of one of those powder blushes that really melds into the skin so that you can't detect it. Wow, this is beautiful, okay. Very pleasantly surprised by this. I thought that could be a disaster, but it's very beautiful. I think this color is really pretty. It's a very pretty coral shade, but I do kind of want either like a more neutral shade that just kind of looks more like I'm blushing from within or a pink shade I think would be really beautiful in this formula as well. Very soft focus. Gorgeous, okay. I'm going to take this Clay de Peau quad again. I'm just gonna to touch up the lower lash line. So I'm taking this matte shade that I used previously and I'm just going to run a little bit of that along the lower lash line just in case my concealer covered any of that up. And finally for lips, I have this Colfi lipstick. This is the 
Rouge à la Vraie. Oh my god, I'm saying that very wrong. And this is in the shade Bangle Box. So it's a very beautiful nudie pink. I've really been liking the brand Coffee. I picked up a few different products and they're really, really great. Um, they're, I would say, a more affordable price point than like most luxury beauty products that I tend to purchase. Really love this brand so far. Well, I've only tried three things, but I really like the three things I've tried. And this is exactly like my Merit Signature Lightweight Lipstick. If you guys don't know, that is like my holy grail lipstick. Very, this is a very, very similar formula. I would say that this one though is even more lightweight and it has a little bit more of a glossy finish. But this is like my new favorite lipstick. So I like my lips to be more lived in, so I always rub in my lipstick afterwards. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of this formulation. It's very, very nice. This is like the perfect nudie pink shade has a little bit more of like a grayish undertone. So this is kind of like the perfect nudie pink lipstick, I want to say. Very, very great. And I feel like I don't even need a lip liner with these types of products. But this really does remind me of the Merit Signature Lightweight Lipstick. Um, it has that same lightweight feeling to it where it doesn't even feel like lipstick. It's very comfortable. It's more of a, it's not sheer, but it's not a full coverage lipstick either. But it's just so comfortable on the lips. And I'm going to top it off with this YSL. This is the Rouge Volupte Candy Glaze in the shade 02. So it's basically just like a clear shade. And I just like to top things off with a gloss. Now I really like this product. I want to pick up some other shades, but I will say I still prefer my Too Faced Hangover RX uh, Pillow Balm Lip Treatment. <laughs> I really like this formula, but it's just a little bit thicker than the Too Faced one. The Too Faced one is thinner on the lips. And this one I can just feel a little more. It feels like an actual lip product versus this Too Faced one feels like a lip treatment where it's very comfortable. Not that the YSL isn't comfortable, but the Too Faced is just a little bit more comfortable. This is the final look. I'm actually not gonna go in with any powder to set my face because I feel like my face feels quite matte. But I'm just gonna go over the products quickly, but this is just kind of my roundup if you just wanted to watch my final thoughts on these. So I really, really like this foundation. It is very smoothing on the skin. Like I look like I have zero texture on my skin. Very pore blurring, very, very perfecting on the skin, but it's perfecting without it having a ton of coverage. Yes, this definitely has a medium coverage, but I can still see freckles showing through and some imperfections, which I really like because I still like my skin to look quite natural. I will say that I'm very curious to see how this foundation performs without this Surat Primer. I do really like this Surat Primer, but it is quite mattifying. Like, it felt hydrating going on, but you can really feel it dry down onto the skin. So I'm not sure if it's this Surat Primer or the foundation that is making my skin look very blurred. But the combination is, like, superb for absolutely blurred skin. Um, but I think this would work better for oily skin types because my skin just feels a little bit dry. But I do really like the effect that this gives because it is quite smoothing. Um, but this foundation is more of the standout, I want to say. I really, really like this formula. This reminds me of like the Giorgio Armani, if I'm comparing it to any foundation. Similar coverage um, to the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. But I prefer this foundation because I feel like it's more perfecting on the skin. It looks better on my skin. Obviously, I don't know how this is going to hold up. But... I will let you know, obviously, if it doesn't end up holding up as well, but this is just my thoughts on a comparable foundation, but it's really, really pretty. I think the color worked out decently. I maybe could have picked a warmer shade, but for a blind bar, I'm impressed by the shade match. I do wish I could have picked it up in the full packaging, but when they come out with this in Canada, or if I really like this and I want to just purchase uh, another color, I will pick it up in the actual full packaging because, I mean, this is kind of stinky, but that's okay. Besides the point, I really wanted to try out this foundation anyways, and it's a little bit more affordable picking it up in the refill, and you obviously can just get it in the refill because this works fine, um, but very, very pretty. I'm very curious to see how... I'm actually going to leave a note below. I'm going to try this out tomorrow, and I'm going to wear it, but I'm going to wear it without this Surat primer, so I'm going to see my thoughts if I like it even better, because I think I will, because I just feel like it won't feel as mattifying on my skin. But anyways, that was a long explanation. This Givenchy blush, I really like the formula of this. Really pretty, but I will say the way I applied it is how I would suggest applying it onto the skin because if you're applying it one cheek at a time, 
you're going to get a different color each time you apply it to the cheek. So I would work back and forth on your cheeks versus applying it to one cheek and then getting more color and applying it to the other cheek. Cause then I feel like it will look like two different colors. Just unfortunately that's what happens when you have a product that distributes four different colors. Um, but I really like this formula. It's that type of blush that melts into the skin. So it looks very seamless. It's also like a skin enhancing blush. Like it makes my skin look even better without it being like obnoxious blush on my cheeks. So I really like how, how it blends into the skin. I will say I'm not a huge fan of this color. So I think I'm going to pick it up in a pink shade or in a more neutral shade, just because I don't love how corals are looking on my cheeks um, these days. So this blush color, not my favorite, but I think, yeah, I'm going to pick up another shade of the Sephora VIB sale. Love this clay de Poe eyeshadow palette. Is it worth the price? For me, it's worth the price. For you, it might not be. Now, this is $110 just for the refill in Canada. If you're buying the full package, it's $140. So it's very, very pricey. But this is the type of eyeshadow that I would use, like, actually on an everyday basis. It's something I would wear to work. I would wear to meet someone for brunch or coffee. I could wear it to the grocery store. I could wear it for dinner. I could wear it to a fancy party event. So this is a palette that I could utilize for all different events. I could use it for anything and I would never be overdone. I would never be over the top. I could also, if I was going to a party, I could just layer a shimmery eyeshadow over top like the Chantecaille Luminescent Eyeshade. Just layer that on top and now I have a more dramatic look. But this is perfect for a neutral, everyday, basic eyeshadow palette. And you just look really put together. But this formula is so beautiful. It's so easy to blend. It's very buildable very beginner friendly. If you have mature skin, I feel like this formula would be beautiful because these are very silky eyeshadows that just, they almost blend themselves. I know that's a pretty silly term to use, but honestly, these are so blendable onto the skin. Very pretty. I prefer this formula over the previous formula, even though I really liked that Clay de Poe formula as well. This is just more refined. It's an even, it's like an elevated technology. It's even more special on the eyes. And you won't really understand what I mean until you try this out, but it is very gorgeous. The other formula just had a little bit more intermittent shimmer. And I like that this is more refined and just, it's really modern. It's very beautiful. Um, the lip products, really like this coffee. This is kind of replacing my Merit Signature Lightweight Lipstick. And this YSL Volupte Candy Glaze. I think this is viral right now, but I really, really enjoy this as well. I will be picking up another shade that's more like nude, so I can just use it on its own. I think it's really comfortable, but it's basically just like a clear lip balm that like melts onto your lips. I still prefer this Too Faced Hangover RX just because the texture is a little bit thinner where this kind of feels a little thicker on your lips. It doesn't melt as easily as this Too Faced one, but I still really enjoy this formula because I like how plump my lips look. So I still will purchase another shade. But those are my thoughts on all this new product. I would love to know if you have tried out any of these products. Do you like them as much as I do? Obviously, you don't need any of these makeup products, but I am enjoying them. But don't feel the need to pick up these products. Again, wait and see if people are still talking about these products in a few months because all of these that I mentioned are permanent. So you can always pick them up at a later date or during a sale or anything like that. But that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it. And I'll see you in my next video.